Let's make a tin can emergency heater. You're gonna need a tin can, obviously. Some candles, a hinge, if you wanna make it look nice, rivets, nuts. You don't have to have the rivet if you have nuts or if you don't have the rivet, you could just go ahead and use these uh, nuts and bolts. Uh, you're gonna need an angle grinder if you have one. Again, if not, you could just use metal cutters. And then lastly, just a uh, wire string. To start making this emergency heater, first of all, have your tin can cut out. We're gonna save the top, and this is very important to keep the top. Um, when we have it all built, we're gonna put this on here, and that's gonna close out the top, but still let air in and let air out to retain the heat, to close out everything out and concentrate all the air, all the hot air coming out of here. So we wanna keep this. So what you wanna do with your tin can is line up this hinge. What we wanna do is actually create a door where we can put the uh, candles into. And you don't have to do this, but this just makes it look nice. You could just insert it from the top, but it's gonna be really hard for you to take the candle in and out. So with the little pool door right here, you'll be able to just insert it into there. So I'm gonna draw where I want to cut the door. So I'm gonna cut right there. And this is gonna be the door and the hinge. You could cut it as big or as small as you want. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. All right. All right, so we wanna use the angle grinder to cut this piece out. If you don't have an angle grinder, you can use some like metal cutters. Make sure you file all the sharp edges. Double check all the marks that we mark for the hinge. And then what we wanna do is drill four holes. And then if you have rivets, use rivets to attach it. If not, you can just use these nuts and bolts. So I'll, use, uh, I'll do two, two with the rivets and two with the nuts and bolts. All right, once you got the holes drilled, it's time to attach the latch. First one I'm gonna use is the uh, bolt nuts. So that's just to make it, hold it in place easily. And let's try to vivid here. Mm. Heck yeah. Look at that. That's the rivet and that's the screw and nut. Now I can also make a handle just using one of these brackets. And these are like the shelf brackets and I just bend one of them. And you can attach it right here. So you can pull it in and out easily. So I'm going to drill a hole right here. All right. And we got a little handle. Cool. Or what? So I got two of these holes drilled out. Going to use some of these wires. And then just bend it into like a handle shape. And just put it on in here like that close it up with a pair of pliers later on and then you got a handle and so for the cap all you really want to do is put it in insert it like this kind of have it at an angle so you have some ventilation where it concentrate the air coming out of here so you don't have an open top, but this will radiate throughout. 
So here we are. All we gotta do now is to light this up, put it in here and see how hot it gets. So all we do now is light up these candles and put them inside and see how hot it gets. It's a light that's gonna radiate a lot of heat. So, so we'll let it burn for a couple of minutes and see how hot it gets. Ooh, this is very nice heat coming out of here. Very nice. Ooh, it's a very nice heat coming out of here. Oh yeah, that's too hot to touch. All right, it's been running for about five minutes. I'm gonna test it right now on the table. It is about 64 right here on the can itself. 77 but check this out on the lid one forty one forty something check it out again one forty five at the very at the very crack where all the air is coming out of almost about one fifty and the lid itself is about one forty uh, a little bit more than 140 so yeah this thing is super hot you can't touch it with both hands that's why this handle comes in handy and that's why this little handle up here comes in handy and this works awesomely well uh, the only issue is i don't know how long these will last they typically last probably less than an hour so um you would have to constantly change it but the good thing is they're not that expensive. If we could integrate this style of heating with some of the vegetable shortening candles that I made that last up to 72 days into here, that would be awesome. So if you haven't checked out the other series on the videos where I made vegetable shortening candles last up to 72 days, check them out. I have a whole series of uh, how to do that on the channel. And that is a wrap guys let me know in the comment if you ever tried this let me know in the comment if you were thinking about trying this and let me know in the comment if you want to see more of these kind of content in the future